Hello students, today I am recording a short demo session for CCNP collaboration. But before starting a short demo, I would like to introduce myself. Myself is Munawar S. Khan. I am having a 15 years of experience in networking. I have worked as a network engineer also and was my job profile was designing, implementing, monitoring and troubleshooting networks. I am having also a teaching experience of more than 10 years. I have taken a lot of in-house batches, corporate trainings, national as well as international. At present, my online trainings are going on. I have also conducted a lot of college seminars, college workshops, etc. Some of the certifications I would like to name is which I have done, CCNA and CCNP routing switching. CCNA and CCNP security, CCNA and CCNP collaboration, checkpoint firewall, Palo Alto firewall. So today we are looking for a demo session of CCNP collaboration. Now you should know that in CCNP collaboration there are four modules or you can say four certification that you have to pass for becoming a CCNP collaboration that is 300 that is 300 by 070 CIPT1 that is Cisco IP telephony okay and video part 1 then we have 300 that is 300 dash 075 CIPT V2 that is implementing Cisco IP telephony and video part 2 then we have 300-080 that is Cisco IP telephony and video troubleshooting and then we have 300-085 CAPS implementing Cisco collaboration applications. I hope you understood these are the four certification that you have to pass for, become, uh, for becoming CCNP collaboration. This is a small infrastructure that I have shown you on this slide where you can see the different okay the different servers like you can see Cisco unified call manager one is which is one of the flagship product of Cisco call manager you can say then you have a voicemail server called Cisco unity connection then you have IMN present server, okay. Then you have Jabber client, that or you can say Cisco Jabber. You have Cisco IP phones, gateway router, which is connected to WAN to some other branch or partner or customer network, okay. This is the WAN link. Then this router is also acting as a voice gateway which is having a SIP or a PRI, a P1 or E1 PRI connection to the service provider. You can see this. This infrastructure is getting connected to branch office where you have Cisco Unified Communication Manager Express, like Cisco is also having a solution of having a call manager on the Cisco ISR routers. And just because this is a branch, this can be done on a router with a very less cost involved in it. You can also have soft phones that is called Cisco Unified RP Communicator on the laptop or machine. You have voice, voice over IP switches to provide power to IP phones. So this was just a, you can say a small architecture or you can say Cisco Unified Communication and Collaboration Network where you have these components. You have more components also, but I have just shown you few components in this slide. Now, if I talk about CUCM, that is Cisco Unified Communication Manager, I told you this is a flagship product of Cisco, one of the top product in IP telephony, which is supporting IP and video telephony. 
it can support up to 40,000 phones per cluster. Now cluster means like if you install one server and then if you install more than one server like the first server which you are going to install is the publisher and as, a, as soon as you start installing subscribers then it is they are they are part of one cluster and they are forming a cluster so cluster in short means a group of servers like publisher subscriber okay and in this cluster not only the call processing servers are there other servers are also there which are part of the cluster like ntp server which is again mandatory ntp is mandatory whenever you are planning to install cucm ntp server is mandatory network time protocol server because publisher always sync the time from the NTP server and subscriber always sync the time from the publisher and all the phones will have the time from their call manager like if the phones are registered through subscriber they will be getting the time from the subscriber and again subscriber will be getting the time from the publisher and publisher getting the time from the NTP server. So it is mandatory to have an NTP server installed before installing CUCM. It runs as an appliance like after version 10 or you can say from the start of version 10 everything was on uh, virtualization that is ESXi servers based on IBM Informix database. It is having a disaster recovery system for backup and restore. Cisco Unified Serviceability and RTMT used for management and troubleshooting like real-time monitoring tools are being used for management and monitoring and you can say troubleshooting. Cisco Expressway for firewall traverses. So these are all uh, uh, features of you can say uh, Cisco Unified Communication Manager. These are again some of the features of CUCM that is it is called as a call controller you can see and the main call processing agent virtualized only I told you after like from starting from 10 it was virtualized you can have up to 8 call processing subscriber and can have maximum of up to 20 server in a cluster I told you it is not only the call processing server that are part of the cluster it is the DSCP server again which is very important to dynamically provide IP addresses to all the IP phones and if you have PCs also in your network then it can give IP addresses to PCs also in the form of data VLAN. Then you have TFTP server again very important server. Then you have NTP server. So you see MOH server that is music on hold. So you see there are many servers being part of this clusters and not only the 8 call processing server. So the maximum number is 20 servers. HA again high availability that is redundancy is there in the form of 1 is to 1 or 2 is to 1. 10,000 endpoint per node that means every server can at least support 10,000 endpoints that means 40,000 per standard cluster and if you want more then you have to have a mega cluster of say 80,000 phones. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the deployment models in CUCM that is unified CM deployment models. So the first one is single site deployment model. If you see there is a building here with lot of switches and IP phones and PCs and there is one unified call manager cluster. If you see this, this is the cluster. In this cluster if you see this there is a top guy called publisher and the other guys like this guy, this guy, this guy or this servers are acting as a subscriber. That means publisher is having read and write permission and these guys are subscriber always following his master that is publisher. Anything happens, happens on the publisher and that get synced to other servers. These are the IP phones connected to PoE switches. If they want to give calls, they can go via T1 or T1 PRI or you can say SIP trunks which is connected. There is a redundancy also for the routers and two service providers are there. So you, you see single site deployment model is 
again very common if you have only one location. So, here you see there is a cluster here where you have all the call managers. Okay. Next slide is what distributed call processing. It is not always necessary that you have only a single site or you can say only one office or one location. You have many time head office and branch office. So, you can see in this slide you have headquarter and you have branch offices. So, in the uh, in the distributed call processing this is one of the costly uh, you can say methodology or you can say costly deployment method because in this deployment method if you see that everywhere there is a cluster here also there is a cluster here also there is a cluster here also. So, every location is having their own cluster definitely they are having a van connection to the head office or head office is having a connection to the branch offices they also have communication towards the PSTN for the calls to the customers or you can say outside calls to their partners or something like that. So, you see in this scenario if you see this is an headquarter, okay, this is the branch A, this is the branch B, IP phones connected to the PoE switches, this is PoE switches, this is a voice gateway connected to PSTN, it is also a normal gateway supporting van link okay now the next slide distributed call processing in this i told you the earlier one was a little bit costlier solution because everywhere there is a cluster but in this case you see there is only one cluster in the head office others are managing with cme which is one of the uh, i told you Cisco is also offering you call manager express on the router ISR router. So, they are managing with this router because this CME is having a provision of less phones you can say okay very less phones support by call manager express like for example, Cisco unified communication manager support 40,000 phones. So, this might support 400 phones max you can say okay or 450 phones depend on the ISR router model. Okay. Some models might support only 35 phones or 50 phones. So, you have to check before buying the call manager express that is before buying the ISR router for making it call manager express that how many phones it support. Now, in the diagram if you see there are only 3 phones. So, yes it is possible to support 3 phones. So, this is a let little bit uh, less uh, or you can say a uh, cost effective solution uh, between head office and branch office. Head office definitely is having a cluster, okay, but other branch offices are having call manager express. The next slide if you see which is again a very famous uh, infrastructure or you can say deployment method, method where you have only one cluster and the servers are being placed at various location like for example, I have placed if you see the server publisher is being placed here okay, and might be the subscriber at various location is being placed. Okay. Publisher might be in head office or in data center or anywhere else and branch offices might carry what the subscribers but it is distributed, it is distributed among branches. But remember one thing in this case the WAN link has to be you know strong enough because all this subscriber has to definitely communicate with publisher wherever they stay they have to communicate continuously at a particular intervals. So, you cannot keep this publisher uh, you know, uh, down or you cannot keep this publisher at such a location where there is no connectivity. So, in this case you have to be very careful about the WAN connectivity. So, everything depends on the WAN connectivity and the bandwidth also matters because they are going to take a continuous hello packets subscriber is going to send a continuous hello packets to the publisher. So, clustering over WAN is also a popular solution where company is managing with only one cluster for various locations. I hope this was informative. This is uh, my small infrastructure I am having at my place. 
okay i do, uh, definitely i'm having a very large uh, infrastructure also this is like a small basic diagram i have drawn okay ntp server i told you very important because it gives a network time protocol is used to have the exact time on the network devices accuracy of the time depends upon the statum level okay i hope you understood this uh, small demo lecture of ccnp collaboration okay for in depth training and for other informations please uh, visit our website www.octanetworks.com our email id is info@octanetworks.com our contact number is 8976767689 skype id is info@octanetworks.com you can visit for instant updates to our youtube that is youtube.com octanetworks linkedin okay facebook like what what new things are coming up okay what offers are there from the octa networks which new training is getting launched everything all the information you can get from these websites okay i hope this was informative okay i hope you noted down this websites you noted down this uh, links and you will definitely visit thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed my demo lecture